Going to YouTube, it is 16 past midnight. Um, today's topic is uh, SpaceX update. Way too early for that Higgs chromosome to space the electrons light. The magnetism of particles and momentum of receptors, radiation, our mathematics, a solution, asteroid. What am I doing up? So SpaceX is one of those uh, aerospace companies, they have a rocket of their own um, and a capsule that they uh, that NASA uses them to uh, ship various things to the International Space Station. The Dragon Capsule is what it's called. Uh, and in the past we've heard uh, SpaceX having certain issues, rockets blowing up. Um, their big thing right now is they want to be able to shoot the rocket up and have the first stage that comes off come back and land on a barge and they've tried that a couple times uh, and without success, uh, but it's difficult to do, you know, you got a lot of forces going on there. Um, but last Friday, um, they had a launch and a fairly significant launch, uh, for various reasons, but we'll, we'll talk about the recovery part first. Uh, they attempted to recover the first stage and you can see video of it. Um, actually a really smooth recovery. So, you see the barge on the ocean again. They, their retrieval barge is um, just just a flat barge on the ocean. Uh, no one there, so it's autonomous. Uh, and the first stage comes down and lands, and it's very smooth. It was actually really cool to see. Um, and uh, you know, first success. So good job, guys. Um, Again, the the previous attempts, they it would it, it either fell over um, because the one of the one of the legs wasn't working or something. Another time, it I don't know all the all the problems, but again, they tried a couple times and failed. Uh, this time, it worked. Uh, so so they know they have a uh, a working concept. Hopefully, they can keep it uh, keep the reliability up and. Uh, do it again and again and again. So now that they have a recovered first stage, they can just refurbish it and get it ready for the next launch. Um, so they launched the capsule up there, and now the capsule has significance too because one of the it, it has a bunch of experiments for the International Space Station. Space Station, they they've always done that. Um, but one of the components in there is a is an inflatable section of the International Space Station. So, uh, I think we've talked about inflatable sections of space stations before. This is the one that's uh, made by Bigelow Aerospace. Um, this is their first product up in the space to be attached. They'll attach it to the International Space Station. They'll inflate it. Um, again, an inflatable portion of the station. Uh, and then they will test it for a couple years. Um, they'll, the astronauts will go in and out of the thing make sure that it's holding up pressure wise, it's you no know, holes punched in it, um, no radiation or whatever, they'll take readings and whatnot. So uh, so for the next couple of years they'll do that. And if it's successful, um, it could really drastically change the way we uh, would send structure up there. Um, in the past we've had these hard structures that required large uh, space Fairing vehicles like either the shuttle, which no longer is in service anymore, or um, uh, larger, basically larger rockets, uh, which right now we don't really have any. So, um, to be able to continue our exploration uh, of space and getting structure up there, we we have to look at alternative possibilities, and one of them is this inflatable, uh, these inflatable capsules. So if this works, uh, this could be the beginning of inflatable hotels in space, um, inflatable habitats on other planets. Uh, again, if you deflate it to a smaller thing, it's easier to launch, uh, easier to transport, and then you just get it to where you need it to and then blow it up, inflate it to, to the size that you need. Um, again, because it's inflatable material, you have to watch out for things like punctures, um, like radiation in space is always a problem um, so yeah oh and leaks uh, because you have to maintain pressure within the capsule within the environment uh, the space station environment so 
so it, it's like I said, it, it's a it's a cool milestone. Um, hopefully, no problems there with the attachment of the inflatable module, and then the inflate of the module, and then testing to see how it works. So there you have it. That's the SpaceX update. Um, a number of cool things happening. Uh, again, good job SpaceX for the recovery. Hopefully the Big Bigelow module works out uh, and we keep sending more rockets up. So, um, Since it's an update, I'll go ahead and update on other things. I finally finished the Amber series. Um, Amber series is 10 books. Uh, this this book is, is all 10 of them combined. They're, they're fairly small books. It's just it took me a while to get back into it. I love the story. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. If you like fantasy, um, read this. And so, since I'm on a fantasy kick, that's uh, also uh, I'm also on a kick for a large series. I decided to start the Wheel of Time series all over again. I'm starting with the Eye of the World. So this uh, this series has about 14 books in it, <laughs> and I've gotten to book 11. And the they're they're all large books, like like here. This this is books one, two, and three. Uh, they're 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 fairly huge. Uh, so eleven of these I got through, and um, decided. But the eleventh book I read a number of years ago, and honestly I don't remember much at all. So I decided ah, let's just start over from the beginning. So uh, starting with book one, Eye of the World. Okay, uh, that's good. I gotta get to bed. And you gotta go do whatever it is you do. Um, talk to you next time. Robert Aki, you're the one. You make bad time lots of fun.